Kumba fans, it's Charlie with the Gossiker Application Staff. Have you got one of these in your shop? Or maybe one of these? Or even one of these? If you do, then chances are you've got one of these. The Akuma Matrix Magazine. This is Akuma's answer to large capacity tooling magazines. It can be anywhere from 70 to 356 tools, depending on your machine's capability. So today we're gonna take a look at this magazine. We're gonna learn how to manipulate it. We're gonna learn all the ins and outs and how to use the control panel. So let's get started at the very top, shall we? So the system is controlled with an operator and interface panel and a touch screen above it. So let's start with the operator panel in the upper left hand corner with the manual intervention switch. When that is thrown and the light is on, not only will the matrix magazine door automatically unlock, but it also inhibits the machine from doing an M6 command. This will allow you to manipulate the magazine while the machine is running and you don't have to worry about the robot taking off to go get another tool. If the machine does receive an M6 command, then this door interlock light will come on and it'll be required that once you finish manipulating the magazine, you press the restart button to allow the matrix to continue automatic operation. The next two buttons address the fact that the matrix magazine utilizes its robot, affectionately known as the rabbit, to stage the next tool to be inserted into the spindle. Well, as long as that tool is in that standby position, we're unable to use the robot. So these following buttons will allow us to return this tool temporarily to the magazine so that we can utilize the robot to populate the magazine. If there is a tool in standby, when you turn on manual intervention, the next tool light will illuminate. And by pressing the button, the rabbit will automatically return the standby tool to its home position temporarily and then it's ready for you to manipulate. When you're done, the next tool repreparation light will remember which tool was supposed to be in standby and it will retrieve it and return it back to the standby position. On the next row, we have our call and storage buttons. Those are how we're going to retrieve and apply a new tool into the magazine. We'll see that in just a second. Next, we have the no good tool collect confirmation and these no good tool lights. Both of these features come into play when a tool is deemed as expired or broken by broken tool check. And since there are only four no good tool pots, any number of tools can be in there. So this feature right here allows you to identify which tool is broken before you pull it out of the machine. That process will make a little more sense once we get up to the manipulation screen. The final button that we need to talk about is the emergency stop switch here. And this one will function identically to the e-stop that's at the face of the control. So if there's an issue while you're behind the machine, hitting e-stop here is the same as if you were standing in front of the control doing it. So now let's deal with our touch screen. The first button to talk about is the tool pot index. This is how we will call or store a tool that's being added or subtracted from the magazine. Let's say, for instance, we want to call tool number one from the magazine into the loading station. First thing we'll do is we will touch the tool pot index button, key in the number of the tool we want to deal with, and push the enter button. At this stage, the machine will now enter a logic loop it will see that tool number one is actually residing in the magazine and it will then illuminate the light to indicate that we can call that tool into the loading station. Now by depressing the call button, the light will start blinking and the rabbit will go and retrieve the tool and draw it into our loading station. The process for storing a tool is identical. We touch one, enter, and now the storage light will be illuminated. And by pushing that, the machine will now come and extract the tool from the standby station and place it in the appropriate slot. Whoa, 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 Charlie. Hey, if the process is exactly the same for calling and storing, how does the machine decide what we're doing? There's a sensor in this loading station right here. 
if a tool is mounted properly this little light will be on and that will trigger the logic loop in the machine to say yeah we are loading a tool we're storing a tool so when I touch the tool number and hit enter it will automatically enter the tool loading stage if this tool pot is empty and the light you saw was not turned on it will then look to see if a tool exists in the magazine if it does then it will say oh okay I'm in the extraction phase so all of this is automated for you so to review that once you have a tool installed in the standby station go to the tool index type in the number of the tool you want to specify hit enter then the storage light will come on by pushing that button it will then do its little inventory and say yep I got a tool I'm gonna to pull it from the load station and put it in its respective magazine pot then if we do the same thing type a tool number and hit enter and a tool does not exist in the standby station then the call light will turn on and by pushing the call button providing that tool resides in the magazine the rabbit will go and grab that tool and bring it over to the load station for you to tend to it now that we have the basics let's talk about these other four buttons that are on the screen starting with number three the pot number and tool table by touching that it will simply show you which tool numbers are registered to which individual pots in the magazine now for a matrix magazine it's not a random tool changer so the tool number will generally be the same as the pot number that makes life easy then we have our no good tool index by touching it it will show me any tools that are in the magazine that are currently flagged as no good our tool data setup tab allows us to enter offset and tool group information for an individual tool without having to walk to the front of the machine then finally the no good tool buffer set by touching that it displays any tools that are in my four no good tool racks that are inside the magazine it'll show me which individual tool numbers those are and allow me to note that that tool is no good prior to extracting them from the magazine basic operation of the matrix magazine is as simple as that now we will have some more videos in the future regarding the broken tool collection and also a really cool feature called the ready station look forward to that down the road thanks and have a great day